biggest barrier to entry for a lot of people getting into electric mountain biking has to be the price. It is really expensive to buy a quality electric mountain bike in 2023. Now, if you're looking at reviews of e-bikes, you'll often see the pricing and see how much some of the e-bikes cost, including loads on my channel. E-Mountain Bike Magazine did a test. They do one every year, a group test, which is great. I'll put the link in the description. They tested 30 of the best bikes from across the industry, and the average price was 11,000 euros, about 10,000 pounds or $12,000. Now, this bike starts at 3,000 1299 pounds this model here is the mid-spec model and with that you get an e-bike with enduro geometry a 170 millimeter fork 160 millimeters of rear wheel travel and you also get bang up to date enduro e-bike geometry from the team at vitas this is not some weird kind of funky bike with weird chainstay lengths and really steep head angles this on paper looks awesome. And the thing is with geometry, it doesn't cost brands any more to have modern geometry. It just costs a little bit more time and R&D. It's awesome looking at the numbers, how relevant the bike is for off-road, aggressive enduro e-mounted bike riding. It's a mullet setup, so it's got 29 a wheel at the front and a 27.5 at the rear. Now, what is interesting about this bike and has also allowed them to get this attractive price point is the fact that they've partnered with Bafang. Now, Bafang are actually a massive motor manufacturer. They make loads of touring and trekking bikes and more entry-level electric bikes. Now, I've got quite a lot of experience with the Bafang system. I've actually built my own DIY e-bike with the Bafang M500 motor and then the M510 motor. Now, this has got the M510 system, which has 95 newton meters of peak torque, which is pretty incredible. If you look at some of the competition, Shimano and Bosch offer 85 newton meters. Uh, Brose in the specialized Levos and Canevos is 90. So this coming in at 95 is a pretty uh, serious competition for those brands. Now, Newton meters don't tell the whole story. There's loads more that goes on with that, the tune of the motor, how it delivers the power. Vita Spikes have been partnering with Bafang to refine the software and the way that it delivers the power. But not only that, also the human elements like the things that you touch. The remote controller of the bike I had was quite um, cheap looking and was quite big and bulky and Vitas have designed with Bafang a new remote that allows it to be run with like a dropper post which is quite a basic thing on a mountain bike but it wasn't able to be paired with a dropper post without some weird kind of routing. It's got a display on it which is much slicker than the one I had and Vitas tell me that they've been working with Bafang to tune the characteristics of the motor to give a natural but punchy and powerful assist characteristic to really work well with the e-bike they've designed. I think that this really is a pivotal moment for more attractive e-bike pricing. And at £3,299, so that entry level one, or 3899 for this one, the accessibility that that brings for more people to get out on trails and experience e-mountain bikes is amazing. Let me tell you, this punches seriously high. This is going to really surprise a lot of people, I think. A full video will be coming soon, so subscribe if you want to be the first to see that. So the Bafang motor has been tuned to have five different assistance modes on this bike. It's got Eco, Eco Plus, Trail, Boost, and a race mode. And the race mode gives 400% assistance. So it's four times your leg input, up to a maximum of 600 watts. And the boost and the race mode have this overrun feature, a bit like what the Bosch race motor has, where you give it a little bit of a stab of power and it continues to propel you forwards for a short duration after you've pedaled to help get you up rocks and roots and logs and that kind of thing with your pedals level where you might not have been able to get a crank in for fear of like a pedal strike or something like that. So Vitas have not just put an off the shelf motor system from Bafang in here, they really tailored it to the characteristics of the bike and they've worked with Bafang to make sure that it's not as crude as it was when I first had it because it was a little bit clunky and a little bit rudimental in the kind of way that it delivered the power, really on off feeling. And I can tell you having ridden it for quite a bit, it is super smooth in the way that it delivers the power. Now, Vitas have spent loads of time on the suspension system on this bike, the leverage ratio, anti-squat, 
anti-rise and it's clear that it was not just a passing thought for them to get some performance out of this rear suspension. They've worked with rock shocks to tune the shocks for the rear and they've spent loads of time making sure that the suspension performance on the bike is actually pretty decent. And the details that they supply in the press pack are the same as what you'd get from a super high-end brand. This is the type of thing that I'd expect from a brand that's selling a bike for £10,000 to go into this amount of detail on the suspension performance of the bike. Now talking about components, this is a sub £4,000 bike, so we have not got Fox Factory or RockShox Ultimate, but we do have branded stuff on here. V-tires, RockShox suspension, an SR Suntour 36 fork, entry-level SRAM drivetrain, and a nuke-proof finishing kit, and a Brand X dropper post. And looking at the tires, they're a really soft, sticky rubber. Now, although a lot of this stuff is entry-level, it's not budget, no-name stuff. It's actually all branded, all stuff that I recognize and have tested a lot of this stuff in the past, albeit it is the entry level, but hey, the bike is an entry level price. Now the thing is with this, no matter which bike you go for, the entry level one at 3,300 quid, the frame and the geometry and the motor system and the battery are identical by the way. You just get a different component set, so the components can be upgraded over time. But what we have on this bike is a 170mm 36 fork. Now it is an entry level fork, but it's a 36. Feels pretty stiff in my initial testing. It's got adjustable compression damping, it's got adjustable rebound damping. It's uh, the 36 fork, it's beefy stanchions. SR Suntour actually supplies some World Cup teams with suspension. It's got a RockShox Super Deluxe shock with 160 mil of rear wheel travel, 170 front and 160 rear, which is actually a real sweet spot for enduro e-bike riding, 170, 160. It's got a broad application of riding that you can achieve on this, cross country stuff, right down to serious terrain, alpine terrain, Enduro World Cup courses. Now the battery is a 630 watt hour removable battery. You can charge it on the frame. You have to pull out this rubber plug. It's a little bit stiff, I'll be honest with you. It took quite a while for me to get it out the first time, uh, but I think it might free up a little bit or you can take the battery out and charge it. It's a two amp charger, it's pretty slow, but you know, for most people charging overnight, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And I'm not expecting a super quick fast charger on a bike of this price. So the total bike weight is just under 25 kilos. It's 24.8 around that kind of weight. 23 to 24 seems to be the range for a, like a higher price e-enduro bike. So 24.8 is, you know, it's it's not too out there. So I think Vitas have been bold actually coming out with this bike. I think that it is going to be a significant bike launch for them. I'm actually amazed by the spec of the bike and the geometry on it. Actually, when I was speaking to the guys from Vitas, I was really blown away when they told me the price. And it does make electric mountain bikes available to the masses. And trust me, this bike punches well above what you might expect it. I cannot wait to share the full video with you that's coming real soon. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon.